Your spinal cord, along with your brain, makes up your central nervous system. The spinal cord is your body's main nerve channel. It's really an extension of the brain located outside your skull. Let's take a look at some MRIs. Here's the brain and the spinal cord. Brain, spinal cord. Brain, spinal cord. And one more. Brain, spinal cord. As you can see, the best way to view a clear picture of the spinal cord would be an MRI. Whenever we look at an MRI, we are also looking for that nice smooth forward curve. Same as the x-ray. A warning here. The vast majority of MRIs are taken with the patient lying down, and this typically reduces the curve in the neck. So the MRI image is not a good indication of proper neck curve and posture. But it does give great views of the spinal cord and soft tissues, while x-rays just show bone. This neck has a total reverse curve. The disc spaces are still thick, but when you reverse that curve, it stretches that spinal cord. Not good. This neck has a compression at C5, probably a compression fracture. The neck above is straight. This elongates or tractions the spinal cord. And at C5, there's pressure on the spinal cord. And right below C5, C6, there's also compression on the spinal cord. This spine has compression at C5, and look how the entire C5 vertebra has slipped posterior, creating that huge dent on the spinal cord. Looking at this neck, we see the spinal cord is in pretty good position. The disc at C4 is bulged backwards and is pressing on the spinal cord, and the disc at C5 is narrow and degenerated. Looking at the upper spinal cord, it's not bad. There's no pressure, there's no tension, but come down to the middle of the neck, C5, that disc is bulging posterior, there's pressure on the spinal cord, you can see the compression, you can see the dent, also the disc is thin, severely degenerated. Here's a neck which has lost its curve, and the discs are all bulging posterior, all of them, C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you can see the small dents or the small protrusions that these discs make in the spinal cord. This neck's got a good curve and the discs are super thick. However, even with a good neck, you can still develop problems from accidents or injuries. Look at that disc protrusion at the C5 level. It's definitely putting pressure on the spinal cord. Disc and spine degeneration at the C5, C6 level. In this case, the spinal cord pressure is caused by the change in the vertebral body itself. The bony changes are putting pressure on the spinal cord, not the discs. This is not a good neck. There's multiple levels of bone degeneration, disc degeneration, multiple areas of disc protrusion, pressure on the spinal cord. There's severe pressure on the spinal cord in the lower cervical spine, and there's spinal cord traction or tension in the upper cervical spine. Serious disc protrusion herniation. Although these discs are thick, look at the size of that posterior bulge putting pressure right on the spinal cord. It's changed the spinal cord's total configuration. When we look at this neck, we see severe disc thinning at C5, C6 level. However, fortunately for this person, the spinal cord doesn't seem to be involved at all. Look at that lumpy, bumpy spinal cord. Multiple levels of spinal cord pressure. Here's an MRI of the low back, the lumbar spine. The left picture shows a nice, clean curve in the low back. The discs are all bulging forward. No pressure on the nerves behind. The right side shows a loss of the lumbar curve multiple areas of disc degeneration, vertebral body degeneration, and also multiple levels of posterior disc protrusion or herniation, putting pressure on the nerves behind. Let's take a look at some x-rays, but first, a quick review. There's the spinal bones, or vertebrae, the discs, and of course, the spinal cord. Here's a normal x-ray. Nice smooth forward curve, good space between occiput and C1, and C1 and C2. That's where the top of the spinal cord, or the brain stem, sits. And thick even disc spaces, all wedged open in the front. No obvious pressure on the spinal cord. This neck is pretty close to normal, although it's lost some curve in the center. Good space between occiput, C1 and C2, and the discs are thick and open in the front. Phase 1 degeneration no obvious distortion of the spinal cord. 
this neck has lost its curve and there is traction on the spinal cord. Look how the space between C1 and C2 has closed down. Pressure on the brain stem. C5 disc is no longer wedged open to the front. It's now open in the back where the spinal cord is. Phase 1 degeneration. There is a closing of the space between C1 and C2 where the brain stem lies. In addition, there is a big curve reversal with C4 disc severely wedged backward or posterior. This neck is already in phase 2 degeneration. Look how that space between occiput and C1 is closed down. Direct pressure on the brain stem. And either C4 has slid anterior or C5 has slipped posterior. Either way, it doesn't look right and this is stretching the spinal cord. Not much degeneration though. Phase 1. This is not a healthy person. The head has shifted anterior. The spaces between occiput and C1 and C2 are closed. Disc degeneration C3, C4, and bone degeneration and compression C5, C6. This spine is in phase 3 to 4 degeneration and there is not much hope of correction. This neck starts out good, but due to the reverse curve lower down, the C1, C2 brainstem space is closed. Also, the posterior facet, or rear neck joint, has compressed and malformed. Extreme bone and disc compression at C5, C6, along with posterior disc wedging and curve reversal. Phase 4 degeneration. Lots of pressure on the upper spinal cord because of the narrowing of the C1, C2 space. This is actually caused by the severe curve reversal lower down. Imagine the extreme stretch and opposite kinking of the spinal cord. Although there is a lot of degeneration at the C5, C6 level, the rest of the neck doesn't have much and the discs are thick. This is still a correctable neck. This neck is not correctable. Severe cord pressure in the upper neck. Reverse curve means the spinal cord is now kinked the wrong way. Massive degeneration on the front of the vertebra. Looks like candle wax drippings. Like the bones have just melted away. This neck is in phase 4 degeneration and cannot be corrected. I remember this patient. His health was not good. Look at the incredible compression of the upper spinal cord. Not only that, the front of the first bone in the neck has slipped forward, which means the back of the first bone has slipped forward too, basically choking off the brain stem. I don't even know how this person is still alive. Look at this poor fellow. Brain stem compression, massive degeneration of the bones and discs, curve reversal. What do you think his spinal cord looks like? What do you think your spinal cord looks like? A healthy body needs a healthy nervous system. And a healthy nervous system needs a healthy spine.